to Start Me Up Videos. My name is Ian Cashton, and we are joined today by Philip McGuire, founder of Glenadon Consulting and Executive Mentors, Inc. Thank you for joining us, Philip. Thanks very much, Ian. It's a pleasure to be here. Glad you came. Could you please tell us a brief description about both these companies that you started? Glenadon Consultancy is a consulting practice that I started back in 2005. And this practice focuses on compliance and accounting standards for Canadian publicly listed companies and private enterprises. Executive Mentors is a company that I formed last year. And I have retained 14 retired businessmen and businesswomen to provide mentoring services to Canada's next generation of business leaders. And from all your experience, it sounds you have a lot of professional experience when it comes to personal finance and uh, risk management. Uh, two topics that all entrepreneurs should I think know a little bit about. Um, so could you tell us about some, what are the biggest risks that budding entrepreneurs face? The two biggest risks that entrepreneurs face would have to be characterized or ranked as follows. So number one risk is financing. Mm -hmm. In order to obtain growth of a company and expand, one requires finances for the organization. The other requirement and tied into obtaining financing would be the understanding of the financial results in order to identify where the financing is required and also to present a credible business plan to lenders. So when we talk about understanding the finances, let's distinguish between op understanding the operations of an organization versus understanding a set of financial statements for the capital markets. It is essential for an entrepreneur to understand and make the link between the numbers and the operations of the organization. It is not necessarily fundamental for the entrepreneur to understand the financial statements as a source of capital. One can defer to professional financial advisors in, in those latter cases. So what advice when entrepreneurs are searching for these finances or investments? What, what advice would you give to these entrepreneurs? First and foremost, start close. Family and friends are always a fantastic source of financing. They tend to be more tolerant than professional mm -hmm. lenders. They also tend to require less documentation and less support for your business plan. Uh, once you move out of family and friends, of course, there are a wide, range of, a wide array of lenders in the marketplace. And we can go all the way from angel investors, which are wealthy investors, to the traditional banks and other lenders. So when, when we go to angel investors or, or banks or, or venture capitalists as well, um, they look a lot on financial statements and projections, correct? That's a very important aspect of the business plan. What are some strategies to developing the perfect financial statement? Let's distinguish between a financial statement and a projection. A financial statement is going to focus on what has happened, mm -hmm. the income statement and the balance sheet. A projection is going to focus on what you believe is going to happen in the future for your company, generally based on, hopefully, increasing sales figures. It's essential to establish credibility with the lender. It is essential to have numbers that are reasonable and to have projections that are based on facts and not wild assumptions. A good starting point then is the financial statements to present what the organization has done to date and then your projections based on your assumptions take those financial statements and estimate what is going to happen in the future. Appreciate that these estimates are always based on assumptions and you're going to be challenged more on your assumptions than you are on the hard financial data that you're presenting to the lender. And you have mentioned before uh, that you should hire outside help sometimes based on different financial projections or setting up your finances and risks associated with such. Um, is, is that something you should be wary about? Because entrepreneurs should know their business from the bottom up. Is, is it okay to hire external help for such an important aspect of their business? That's a very good point. It is absolutely essential for the entrepreneur to understand the financials and the financial statements. In my observation of dealing with entrepreneurs, that's probably the number one weakness mm -hmm. and the number one deficiency of, of people 
in terms of presenting a holistic understanding of their business. The challenge, of course, with financing and accounting standards and financial statements is that they can be quite complex. And the entrepreneur only has a certain amount of time in every day to dedicate to non-core responsibilities of running the business. I would advise hiring outside professional help only as a last resort and only when you are dealing with lenders that require you to have that credibility at the table. For example, if you're looking at an initial purchase offering, an IPO, or a significant loan from a bank, it helps your credibility to have a finance person with you. But you're dead right, don't ever think you can absolve yourself of the responsibility of you understanding the financial statements and the numbers. It is your company and it is your responsibility. With that huge responsibility, I imagine that some of these entrepreneurs have, have trouble looking at their company objectively. Uh, would this sort of external help help them maybe put a valuation on their company? It's always very difficult to examine your own company and your own finances objectively. We all have biases and we all miss things. In my observation, you don't necessarily need to speak to an accountant to glean very credible and important information about your company. Family, friends, the, the person you haven't spoken to in six months from a college or university friend can oftentimes offer common sense advice. And that's often what is missing when you don't have that ability to objectively look at your company. Um, so I would focus on not necessarily hiring high-priced talent, uh, but speak to friends and family that may have an accounting or finance background and can provide you those initial steps. Appreciate that if our audience is what I'm going to refer to as bootstrap entrepreneurs, in other words, entrepreneurs who are not well established in the marketplace, your financial, financial needs are not extensive. And there is no need to make that leap to having to hire a, a financial person from a, a reasonably small startup company. You evolve into that process of hiring more expensive help. Uh, I like to use the maxim, let the business run the expenses and not the other way around. Make sure the revenues are coming in. Make sure you have a valid business before you start hiring high-priced help. In your experience as a mentor, is that a problem when it comes to entrepreneurs, that they get carried away with their expenses and they might not necessarily know where to spend their money? It's an enormous problem with entrepreneurs. It's probably one of the biggest causes of bankruptcy or failure is not appreciating the order in which a business needs to be run or should be run. Um, I like to refer to it as analysis paralysis, where people are overwhelmed with what needs to be done. They can start with a very concrete and very solid idea, but taking that idea and putting it into a business and, and actually generating revenues and sales from an idea is quite a leap. So in the absence of knowing where to start, some people jump off the deep end and incur unnecessary expenses. A good example is a fellow I know who rented some office space and hired a secretary in a very expensive part of town uh, with no sales, no money coming in the door, and a year later realized that his clients and his customers preferred him to go to their offices rather than coming to his offices. So he incurred all of these expenses uh, unnecessarily and with no benefit. So it can be very difficult for an entrepreneur to identify where to put the resources and, and where to spend the money. Do you have any other strategies when it comes to developing a proper business plan in terms of financing or, or risk management or anything that we've discussed today? My advice is, if in doubt, go slow on spending the money. Mm -hmm. But don't go slow on the marketing. Don't go slow on the sales and revenue generation. One of the biggest observations I have when people speak to me about financing and obtaining funds is that it's not clear from them what they need the money for. So for example, if somebody approaches me to say, I need $200,000 for sales and marketing efforts, that doesn't mean a lot to me. If somebody approaches me and 
says to me, I need $200,000. I'm going to hire a director of sales. It's going to cost me $150,000 to hire this individual. When I add benefits into that, it's a $200,000 outlay. I expect in the first six months that I will have repaid that $200,000 outlay because I will have generated X dollars in sales and then within a year of hiring this individual, I will be profitable. That business analysis, that trenchant analysis of where the costs are going to generate the revenues is going to assure you a much more likely audience with prospective lenders. And as an experienced mentor, do you have any other ex uh, suggestions or advice, the common advice that you might give to a lot of your entrepreneurs? The advice I would give is talk to everybody. Don't confine your circle of advisors. It is amazing to me that when you speak to people, the advice they can provide to you, and it doesn't have to be business people, it can be your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. It's amazing how these people can draw observations and provide solutions to problems that you are confronted with because as we touched on earlier, it's very difficult to be able to step back and take that objective viewpoint. And particularly when organizations are starting out because once you start, you're going to see that there is a natural path and a natural progression. The market is going to tell you whether your product is a success or not. And if it's not a success, that's not necessarily a disaster because you've learned something. And this is all about making mistakes and learning from your mistakes. And if you didn't make mistakes, it wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> it wouldn't be any fun, that's right. Uh, so for a lot of entrepreneurs, they usually are, might be fresh out of school or, or might have just come from an MBA program where you learn a lot of financial knowledge that might not necessarily be relevant to the real, real world. Um, do you have any suggestions how you transition from what we learn in a textbook to, well, what's out there? That can be a tremendous challenge because, of course, what you're going to learn in a textbook is a textbook example. And unfortunately, textbook examples don't happen in the real world. The challenge, of course, is to understand the accounting principles or the finance principles and how it relates to your particular circumstances. And in that case, my advice would be don't be overwhelmed with the volume of accounting advice and data in the marketplace. Rather, focus on your unique situation. Appreciate that a startup company is not going to make a critical mistake such that you are out on the street without a home and without a car and without a livelihood. You're starting up a company. You're going to make some minor mistakes along the way as you venture out. Uh, make sure that what you're doing uh, ties back into your financial plan. Uh, budgets are very important. Don't spend beyond what the money is coming into the organization. Well, Philip, you've brought a lot of very useful advice to all of our entrepreneurs watching out there. If you have if I had one key message to close, what, what would it be? My best advice would be being an entrepreneur is very exciting and it has a lot of rewards. So take charge of your situation, uh, be it the financial side, which most people do struggle with, but there could be other aspects of your business that you're struggling with, sales and marketing, human resources development. It really doesn't matter what the issue is, but identify your weaknesses, identify the points that you are most uncomfortable with, and spend time on those areas. Don't avoid them, don't shirk them you will find that making the effort to understand these issues goes a long way for you to grasping and becoming master of those issues and becoming more than just a, a one uh, shop stop regarding your entrepreneurial uh, product, but you then can develop a company around the product or an idea. Well, Philip, thank you for all this advice. It's been very useful. I, we hope to have you back one day to, to give a follow-up, because I'm sure we'll have a lot of great feedback from our audience. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Ian. My pleasure.